we're gonna wind up doing this recorded screw that we need to be we need to have fun and have organic uh content going off it so <laughs> we're gonna do another episode of uh them's fighting words and uh, i have sifu derek chan from ko kung ko fung martial, martial arts Art. yes yeah, yeah uh, number one thanks i appreciate you being patient for the last 10 minutes Number two, thank you for joining and hanging out today. Really appreciate this. I wanted you on for a while to have a conversation with you. Um, I, you and I never really spoke, and I saw your content on Instagram, and I was like, this is really good. And then I'm like, I got to get you on because we got to introduce you to everybody. So everybody, Sifu Derek Chan. Derek, Derek Chan, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> appreciate that. How are you? Thanks for thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Look, tell everybody a little bit. Give it the give the three hundred sixty degree view of, of who you are, um, you know, and let's talk uh, about Wing Chun martial arts and your passion. Who I am? Uh, well, I'm I'm Derek. I'm uh, a martial art instructor, and I'm also a personal trainer. And I've been teaching uh, Wing Chun for the past ten years now. Okay. How'd you get involved with Wing Chun? Or were you involved with any other martial arts first, or what was your Wing Chun journey? No, I actually started when I was eight when I was doing Wing Chun. Holy crap. Okay, how old are you if you don't mind my asking? I'm 35 and turning 36. That's all, um, all downhill from there. I have the same birthday as your favorite person, Bruce Lee. Uh, <laughs> I do, I can't believe that I did a 10-year anniversary video the other day, and I forgot about when I put that video up was no, November 28th, right? Uh, it, the birthday is... 27, oh, 27 i wasn't sure what whatever day i put i put it up on on his birthday and people were in the comments section going dude how this is really crappy of you. you're putting up this video on his birthday i'm like i'm not a fan of bruce lee how do you think i know when his birthday is so that's uh that's a little bit ridiculous um what was your why wing chun why did you get involved with wing chun were you kind of put into it or did you, you saw it and went uh you know i like this how did you get involved with wing chun uh i actually was placed to it by my parents so i wasn't uh my two brothers and two of my cousins joined me when i was when i was eight so we're we were just doing my interest. it wasn't really we didn't really research anything about wing chun i actually don't know what wing chun was i was just placed in the class yeah what was it so uh, you uh, you stuck with it i mean at eight years old most people are either putting like taekwondo is the normal path or you know uh, uh wrestling or boxing Wing Chun to be have an eight year old putting it is actually very, um, it's like not common. Did you have a what was it like being taught as an eight year old? I mean, can you look back at it? And when we teach adults, it's going to be different than teaching eight year olds. Were you taught, um, you know, uh, more along lines of very rigid and structured first because you were a kid? Um, well, the thing was like uh, for Chinese, my parents are immigrants, right? So. I think it's really common for Chinese families to introduce their own children about their own culture. So like typical thing is like learning Chinese, like going to Chinese school, right? Learning martial arts, right? Or like survival stuff, like swimming, right? Those are the necessary needs for people that, you, you know, they want their kids to learn, right? But for martial art, it was more like a, a cultural thing and I guess I'm not sure if they really want me to learn how to defend myself, but it's more like emerge yourself, you know, to be, you know, you're Chinese. So understanding your own culture a little mm -hmm. bit. Right. So when I first learned Wing Chun, I didn't really get it. Like, you know, the horse dance or like, what's this horse dance about? I'm like, it's more like form. Yeah. So it's more form in the beginning rather than most technical stuff. And being an eight year old, I was sort of a bad student, so in break time, I because it was hosted in the gymnasium. So during break time, I'll go to there's a next door where like I guess over the high school kids playing uh, basketball, and I'll go there and play basketball with them. And my dad will get me like a stern look after. He's like, "What? Where did you go?" I'm like, I'm like, "Oh, oh." i like, "Yeah," but I kept up with it though. I'm so I want to get into the meat of this too. Your your heritage is Chinese. I want you to, and that's you know Wing Chun, Southern Chinese martial art. And you see a lot of people like me who is clearly you know American. I, what are we, what are we, misunderstanding about your culture when it comes down to our talking about Wing Chun? Are we? Is there anything that like I say or anybody else says that you listen to and you're like uh, it's just not right? You know, I mean, have you as 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 anything like that happened where you wish that you could correct 
those of us who are spreading your culture, but we're maybe not doing it the right way? Uh, I think what I'm just reflecting from my students who are foreigners, uh, I think one of the major confusion will be you get the concept. It's just the, it was more like the wordings. Like for example, uh, you know, we all get the word saying like uh, attack and defense at the same time, right? So I think a lot of times, a lot of people thought that the Chinese word is lin xiu dai da. Have you heard of that one before? Uh, no, I have not. So this word has always been repeated over and over. And then they're saying, oh, it means attack and defense at the same time. But it actually, it doesn't mean that way at all. It, it means, lin xiu dai da means to, it's a, it's a war term, meaning that our first burn the base camp and then I'll follow up with an attack. So that's that means to uh, that means it's a two beat, right? I'm doing two action, burn the bridge or burn his camp and then I'll attack him. Whereas Wing Chun is simultaneous, it's one beat. So the proper saying in the even it's in the Wing Chun maximum is actually called uh the saying is da sao jik siu sao. Offense is defense, defense is offense. That's one beat, right? I think a lot of the reason I haven't heard is because it's coming through the mouths of somebody who doesn't speak Cantonese. So I, we're probably butchering the way that we're saying it as well, too. Uh, so I, I, these are things that the more I get involved with this, the older I get, too. I have always started to wonder, you know, I, I made Wing Chun mine, but I, I also have to respect to where it came from because, you know, as you know, I'm always talking about Bruce Lee and how much I really don't not a fan of him. I, I don't want to do what he did which is to a degree, he kind of like poo-pooed Wing Chun and then disrespected the culture. So as, as outspoken as I am, I always want to make sure that I'm, I'm very respectful of it. Um, when, you, when you started teaching, what was one of the biggest things that you wanted to uh, instill on in your students? Did you want to teach them to fight? Did you want to teach them the beauty of, of the art itself? Did you, you know, uh, I, I have to assume, you know, if, if the Ip Man movies came out, Jeez, probably almost 20 years ago, you know, you were still younger. So did yes. you did you see a wave? Of, yeah, I remember. Gosh, we were out at bars when the first Ip Man movie came out. And we're like, oh, my gosh, this is going to do so awesome for Wing Chun. But then so many people thought that they were going to fight like Donnie Yen. Did you see an opportunity to kind of introduce this awesome style to people who maybe just wanted to learn flashy movements? Or did you feel a responsibility to have people understand, no, this is still a, a very, very real fighting martial art. I think the problem with the, I mean, it's not a problem. It's a good thing. It's good marketing. I, I think it, there was a rise of Wing Chun, interest of Wing Chun after the Donnie Yen movie. And there's also a rise of like everyone trying to ride the wave, you know, like I'm also a, a Wing Chun instructor. And you can obviously can tell that they don't know about Wing Chun, but they, claim themselves to know Wing Chun. And that's, I also know that's in YouTube, actually. There's a, quite a lot. Like right? Suddenly there's like hidden students of Yip Man student. It's like, I'm a student of Yip Man, but I'm like, you're pretty young to be a Yip Man student, right? <laughs> all of them should be like, right now, gosh, all of them should be in their 80s and mm -hmm. at least 90s, right? If you're seeing your Yip Man student and you're like maybe in your 60s or 70s right now, you're most likely is, you might learn from him, but like maybe the chance of you really actually learning something from him truly is probably rare, right? Mm -hmm. So pe people don't consider that. I think for me, when I first started teaching Wing Chun, it's more about, I think it's just more preserving the art and teaching it properly. As in, we all have different lineages, and I actually had that in a, in a previous interview, is more, I see Wing Chun itself as a biomechanic and science of it and rather than a style people treat it as a style like we move in a particular pattern a lot of people just argue about tactics and movement patterns but they're not really talking about the mechanics of it or why we do things like why do we push with our heels right because it's more we're able to drive more force when we push with our heels is scientifically proven right it's just that people are like, oh, why don't you use tippy toe? But well, tippy toe is a different, it's a different uh, type of force and different mechanics, right? So you're you're you yeah, you're a fitness trainer. Have you ever I incorporated am. that? Where looking at people saying, yeah, 
try to squat with only using your toes and then try to squat driving off of your heels. Have you ever used those type of analogies? Because, yeah, if you, have, uh, if you stand on the top of your toes and you load the bar up with 315 pounds, yep. it's going to be hard yeah. to do. Yeah, talk about yep. that. Well, actually, I was a Wing Chun instructor before I, uh, before I became a fitness instructor. So, actually, my Wing Chun helped my personal training because Wing Chun is really like very detail oriented in learning the people's mechanics, right? Like why do we keep our elbow down? It's not, it's, it's all just easier, easier line of fire, right? It's, we have more leverage, we're able to push, but if we flare out your elbows, you're not really gonna, you're out of alignment, right? So I do use that aspect to teach my clients and not really so much of like patterns. Like a lot of people just like to debate, you know, like, about the tanza, bongsa, and how it should be, but it's really just mechanics, alignment, right? There's no really argument. You can your time can be low, your time can be high, but the main key though, your tanza should still be in the, you know, your elbow should be down, right? Or your elbow shouldn't be in, right? Your elbow's in, you're locking up the shoulders, and you're not able to drive much force if you want to. But people like to argue little stuff like this, but they don't even understand the human anatomy. And that's really frustrating. Why are we so focused on that? Why is it even within our community, you know, the Wing Chun space, that we're still arguing over, we all claim, well, it's a concept, right? It's a conceptual martial art. If we claim that so much, how come so many of us are arguing about, well, that's not right or that's incorrect? Uh, uh, Clint Cloyes, who's a friend and a, and a teacher out of Indiana, he, when he started doing YouTube videos, one of the, the running jokes that we used to have was, oh, you're not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. Because every time we would do a video, other Wing Chun uh, teachers and students would say, you're doing it wrong. Why is it that we're so obsessed with doing it wrong in a, con in a concept based martial art? I think a lot of times, like, people forget to, I, it's my own, own opinion. Like, I honestly feel like, a lot of Wing Chun instructor, they're they're not really they don't really understand anatomy as much, so they don't so they just told us what be, what they know, right? That's why I don't like the word tradition. I don't think we actually have in Chinese Kung Fu we just call it martial art, like wushu or mosu. It's just martial art. It's not we don't really have a tradition right behind the word. Tra tradition is really what like whatever the person has been taught. I'm telling you what I've been taught and you're following that way, but they don't understand that. Well, maybe what he's taught, maybe wrong, right? It's what he knows. It's not what, what it doesn't mean is absolute, right? Or what we actually understand Wing Chun itself is, is a science-based type of martial art that talks about science, leverage, right? Biomechanics, but people just want to go by like, oh, you know, my, my Sifu said this, or my great, great grandmaster said this, but, they don't, they take it as a holy Bible rather than saying, hey, is it, is it really based on Wing Chun or is it just based on the experience? And most people are, are teaching based on their instructor's experience. Like, I mean, I, I give respect for everyone. For example, like the Wong Sun Learn Limit, right? What, they're all based about fighting, right? But like, does it mean they're right or wrong? No, it just means that, you know, it's, their system is based on what Wong Sun Learn when he fought in his experience of fighting, right? But we're, he's, we're still not talking 100% about the, the biomechanics and the structure of Wing Chun. Can Wing Chun, let's look at today's day and age. You know, everything is MMA. Everything is, uh, it oh, yes. doesn't work unless you see it in the ring and all this. Uh, how do you address when people are, oh, you're Derek Chan and you've got this huge Instagram uh, uh, following, which I'd love to see you translate to, to YouTube as well, too. For those who aren't following, make sure you follow uh, Sifu Derek over on Derek G. Chan on Instagram. And his YouTube channel is uh, Derek G. Chan, too, as well. Subscribe and uh, start showing him some love. Are you getting people in today? Well, it doesn't work unless we see it in the ring and in MMA. And, uh, you, 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 how come we don't see Wing Chun? How do you personally address that That issue where people say you don't, if, I, I don't i've never seen wing chun work i think i get that message all the time especially uh i start you know getting more notice you know you know the most common one is also like xu xiao dong like i want you to see you fight xu xiao dong you know but like the thing about xu xiao dong is i have nothing against him he was really filtering out the 
the fake masters, right? Master who claims to have mysterious chi, mm. right? And then there's a Tai Chi master, like he just punched him one time and he gave up, right? You can't, you can't call himself those are like traditional martial artists if they gave up with just their one punch, right? So I think for me, um, to there's multiple things that I say to these people. It's more like Wing Chun is more like a, it, it's just a raw material. It's, it's just teaching us three things, right? Wing, Wing Chun, the, when you look at the core of Wing Chun, it just teaches us how to be efficient, effective, and economical, which is which can't be transferred to many martial arts because it's based on biomechanics. While we do have our own type of movement patterns, but the core of Wing Chun is really just how to be effective, efficient, and economical with our, with our movement. So just because people you see online are not able to apply it, it could be multiple reasons, right? It can be experience level. Maybe they just don't spar, right? And I think a most common mis this misunderstanding of traditional martial artists is that we only stick in one style, but in reality, we, we, the good martial artists will actually go and spar with multiple people. Like they'll spar with a jiu-jitsu guy, they'll spar with a Muay Thai guy, they'll spar with boxing. Like we're, we try to make things work. Whereas, whereas the, the most argumentative ones I notice in you know, social media are, or peer Wing Chun people who never sparred, or they just spar with people who pretend to be boxers, to pretend to be Muay Thai guys. Whereas for the actual respectful ones, really respectful seafoods, or ones that they, they not only they study Wing Chun, they study Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Jiu -Jitsu, they do boxing, or they actually took the time to actually understand what other people do, or they took the time to even spar with them. And that's really how old masters are doing it anyways. They always share with each other. They look at the dummy. The, the whole dummy is really, a, it's not Wing Chun against Wing Chun, but the whole dummy, the dummy is actually going against non-Wing Chun people. And that's why that leg sticks out is because like, uh, like a karate punch or the Hongar punch, right? People will lunge forward with their knee. And that's why we always knock out the knees because those type of people will always lunge forward. And that's one thing that people don't get is that Wing Chun is, to be good in good Wing Chun, you have to really spar with different type of styles, like good people like are proficient in their style, not just people to pretend that they're boxing or to pretend to be like grapplers. Like you really want to go against someone who can grab you down and smash you, right? And that's how you actually learn. Is Wing Chun a complete system or is it lacking? Uh, I don't know how tall you are, but, um, you know, like, like with me... The, the 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 boxing range or the kickboxing range, it's difficult for me to wind up dealing with. So that's why I just close the gap. And I've always taught, you know, be prepared to take a couple hits. And then as long as you get in, um, is is Wing Chun complete, irrelevant of the person's body size and height, or do yeah no we need Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah we need a different boxing game. Do people need to incorporate, or is that really up to the individual? Oh. Uh. Whether I, I personally think it is complete because it is a system. Wing Chun is a system. It's teaching. And what people don't get is that Wing Chun, we, we, the old Wing Chun back then, they're, they're learning how to fight with knives, right? We're fighting with knives. We're not fighting empty handed. It's, we're, we fight empty handed when we don't have our weapon, right? And when you look at the Wing Chun system, Wing Chun system is really learning how to. The ceiling tower is really learning how to be synchronized with your body. And then the Chum Q is learning how to move your body mass, right? You're, well, when you look at the three section, right? You're moving in the lateral, no, transverse. Second section is laterally. And then the, the third section is frontally, right? You're just learning how to move your mass, right? And then uh, beauty is really more about acceleration. And then the wooden dummy is just learning how to deliver this is basically force, right? Mass, movement, and acceleration. And you're learning how to deliver the, your force and how to receive the force and move around the force. It, 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 I mean, it is a, it, it's a system of teaching you what you need to learn, right? It's mm -hmm. not really, but you're talking about like, oh, I go, how do you go against a grappler? How do you go against a boxer? Those are more tactics, right? 
how you go against people or tactics. But Wing Chun itself, as, as I mentioned before, the whole thing is how to be efficient, effective, and economical with our movement. The whole, the whole time, right? It's, it's not even the movement pattern thing. Yes, I mean, we prefer attacking and defending at the same time. That, that is a tactic, right? That is a tactic of how to be efficient and effective and economical. But it doesn't mean that we can't be able to transfer that knowledge to other, other um, systems. That's why I always have like friends who, who I met through online, you know, they're Wing Chun practitioners and they're Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructors. And they always tell me they're able even to do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when they do the hand fighting, like, well, that's clearly Wing Chun. That's like a chi sao. They just, it's just that when they, when Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner does it, it looks cool, right? Mm -hmm. For Wing Chun people who does it, it looks like, ah, it doesn't work. Patty cake, yeah. <laughs> right, it does. Um, yeah, this, I'm, I'm loving this. I, I, it, it, it's Wing Chun's, the system can fit in anything. And that's, it's, yeah. it's, so, it's so great. You know, unless people have actually applied it and, and they, they had that personal light bulb moment for like, oh my gosh, it does work. You still get such a detraction of, of, of disbelievers. Um, what are some of the things that you, or has your, your views of Wing Chun in the last 30 years you've been training it? Has, have you seen, have your, has your thinking evolved? I mean, I'm, you know, 25, 26 years into it. And, and sometimes I, I, it was your video. It was your video because I've always said, no, there's, there is grappling application to Wing Chun, right? I've known it forever. I've, I've known all the forms, this and that. And then I see your video and I went, son of a bitch. I didn't realize, I mean, I knew it was, but I didn't know where it was. And I've done the pole form, which has, uh, has the battle punching uh, a stance and you do it. And I'm like, oh my God, there it is. How come it took me all this time to, to see this? Have you ever had moments like that where your Wing Chun has evolved or, or changed your views of, uh, uh, opened up? Uh, I have because I actually do study, like I do watch many other type of styles as well. And um, that's why I come, call fall in the conclusion that Wing Chun is a, just a raw material because we're, we're dealing with mechanics, right? As long as mechanically it works, I mean, it can be transferred. For example, like even when we're talking about grappling in Wing Chun, there's a, actually a lot of throwing techniques in the beauty system especially people will think that's an oh, elbow strike. No, I can see that as an underhook grab and twist. You're, that's actually a throw. That's actually, a, and I saw that also when I saw Rhonda Rousey, when she was practicing one of her, uh, she was preparing a fight and she was like doing a, she was doing a, her practicing her throw, but with no one. It's just a, like an air throw, I guess, mm -hmm. a shadow throw. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a beauty. That's a great job right there. She's like, whoop, like, and she was turning. I was like, that's beauty right there. But like, people don't see that though, right? People are like, oh, you know, that's a judo, right? But like, or a wing chun, this is a, they like to see that's just an elbow. Like, it's, it's, it's more than what we, what we see because it's not, especially for wing chun, a lot of things in Wing Chun are actually hidden too, because it's a rebellion art. And being a rebellion art, we, we don't we feel everything. And that's actually, uh, I'll say one thing though. It's like chum Q. You know the word chum Q in Chinese character. It means to search the bridge, right? But it's also equally right when you. It's a phonetically. It can also mean sinking the bridge. Right. Master Wong, him and I had a conversation 10 years ago, and he teaches it as sinking the bridge to where, yes. yeah, I've always done it, seeking the bridge. And then I've done it where it's actually uh, internal, meaning that you got dual, and I, I want to be corrected if I'm wrong. The way that I teach it is, yeah, you could be seeking the bridge uh, between you and your opponent. You could be sinking their bridge, but my view was that the Chum Q was seeking the bridge between your upper and your lower half, your uh, internal energy moving, uh, seeking the bridge within yourself, bridging your your weapons with movement. That one I never heard, but I can see where you're coming from, though. You, for Selim Dao, I always thought people, Selim Dao is sharpening your sword, right? And then you have to actually learn how to swing it if you will, and that's where Chum Q is. So that's where I teach my students is you're seeking the bridge between your upper and your lower triangle, putting them together. But again, that's just, that's me uh, capitalizing off of what it's called, seeking the bridge. But go ahead. Yeah. So, well, for example, even Kung Fu, right? The word of Kung Fu, that I even think is a, 
It's like oh, martial art. That's what most hard work. Is it doesn't mean yeah. hard work? Okay. Yeah, you read it backward. Actually, you read it backward. Fugong is a different character. It means bitter work. Talk it about. Means, uh, explain then what you were talking about with seeking the bridge and then sinking the bridge. Um, do you use both of those concepts when you teach, or is it, or, or is there one more solid in your mind than another one is? Uh, well, remember I told you about like the equation for force of its mass times acceleration. So. Ceiling Tao is really just learning how to generate the mass, right? Body unison, balance, right? Uh, Chum Q is really about moving your mass, right? Laterally, transversely, uh, and frontally, right? And you're learning how to use downward force, right? You're just playing with force. And whereas Chum, uh, Biu Ji, Biu Ji is not actually long. There's two things, thrusting fingers, but it can also be rising, rising force. And learn when to stop, right? Because when you learn how to accelerate, learn how to generate force, you need to learn when to stop, right? Some people punch way off their boundary, right? Or they don't know how to, they don't know how to have rising force, right? That's why in the beauty, there's all force that goes upward, or they're going upward then down, right? So it's you're just playing with force. It's all science and mechanics when you think of it. Who's um who has inspired you? I mean, in the day and age where we have everything's on YouTube. Has anyone out there, you know, been an inspiration for you to uh, cultivate your teaching and training style? Uh, well, my Sifu is also my my Sifu, Sifu Nelson Chan is actually one of my inspirations. And he always, uh, he's a really humble person as well, but he, but he also just focused on preserving the structure of Wing Chun, just look at the Wing Chun and always, he always tell me like, Wing Chun is just one and zero. There's only black and white, meaning there's only right or wrong. It's structure, right? Essentially, it's just structure. Really. Rather you, it's like squatting, right? It's, there's only one way to squat. <laughs> but like people just think that there's a many type of way of squatting. Yes, you can use the kettlebell, you can use the dumbbell, you can use the barbell, but the mechanics of, which, of how you squat, it's, it's, there's only one way to squat properly, right? There's no, there's no multiple ways of squatting is just one way because it's a human anatomy and i guess my other one my one of my striking coaches also one of my uh inspiration as well he never uh he's like a karate practitioner and also he's done uh other styles as well but from him it's like more about uh i guess he's more teaching me how to utilize my wing chun He's not teaching me karate. Sometimes you share karate with me, but it's more like, you know, Derek, like sometimes you're just lacking the attribute sometimes, right? Because he's he's six one, uh, two hundred pound Ukrainian, right? He's like uh, big. yeah, big guy. And I'm sparring with him all the time, right? So it's really hard. But like for him, he's like, Well, Derek, it's not that you know your wing chun is not good, it's just that you need the attributes, right? You need the strength, you need the speed, you need the timing. And that's what a lot of people don't get about wing chun. They just feel like, oh, I learned a pacta, a lapta, I'll be good. I'm like, no, you're not. You're so like, are you are you advocate? I wanna I wanna come back to the fitness aspect of it in a second, but I want you to explain first. Uh it's gonna be two parts. Can you explain what structure is? Because we we throw that term all the time around in Wing Chun, right? And people are like, what are you talking right. about structure? And then after that, after you get through with structure, can you talk a little bit about, since you're in fitness, is there, should we lift weights in Wing Chun? Should we be fit for Wing Chun? Because according to people like uh, Liang Ting, you know, you, you, you should not lift weights in Wing Chun. So that's two parts. What's structure? And then where does fitness come into play in the Wing Chun world? Uh, structure is quite simple. It's, well, one is when we're talking about science, it's also it's just, it's, we're just talking about alignment, right? Alignment, right? Why we don't fight with a shoulder up? Because your shoulder popped up, you're not going to have the power, right? And you're and you're not able to uh, generate the necessary power or the or stacking of the spine, right? That's why we have to have our our, our head tucked in, right? We have our, we lower our center of gravity because it's more about you know aligning the lower lumbar spine, right? Because we usually have some people actually have a natural curve on their back, but if you're one solid piece, then you're able to generate more mass, right? You're more synchronized with your body. But if you're 
talking about Wing Chun specifically, we're, we're playing with triangles, right? Tai Chi play with their circle. And for them, they have their own reason of doing, right? That's why they curve in their curve in their chest and they pop up the spine to make a circular movement, right? To to redirect the force, or they're trying to, or they're trying to uh, use like a maneuver, like moving around them. Whereas Wing Chun, we're just jamming, right? We're we're more like a triangle shape, so we can intercept them, right? And when we look at the Wing Chun system, there's at least there's at least five triangles in the horse stance when you think of it. Can you, uh, well, I, we'll continue then that one too. Can you talk about the horse stance for a bit? What is the, in some systems, you have the, the knees are squeezing in for the E.G. Kim Young Ma, the goat clamping stance. Yeah. My, I don't teach my students that. I teach my students that you're projecting your energy down and forward to form a tripod. What are your views on it? I mean, is there benefit to either one? Is one right? Is one wrong? Uh... Well, you teach him remote, the clamping goat or stands is well the wing chun the ceiling tail one is just for training the inner size, right? It's not really you're not really fighting with it. That's just strength is an isometric exercise. But with your I will say the fighting stand will be more in the chum cue. The chum, there's two stands, right? The Jing San Chema and then the the more like the back one foot back and one foot forward that one's more for going projecting forward right like the main key of why we have the feet in though is just more that you protect your knee so someone when they stomp on your knee you don't hyperextend it so when you sort of curve in or have it hooked in at least when someone's stomp on your knee you're able to like you know not not protect it as in the sense of like at least they won't hyperextend. You know where, where like John Jones, where he always used a Wing Chun kick, and the people their their knee just goes in, right? Because mm -hmm. if if your knee actually go, goes like goes in like a E G Kimura Ma, it actually protects you from happen from right. not happening. Isn't it anatomically? It's a lot harder to break a knee if there's a bend in it. Once yes. it's straight. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, so if the knee is if the knee is facing forward, like the like the wooden dummy knee, right? The wooden dummy knee is actually is a, is the knee is pointing out. And for Wing Chun guys, if that's the automatic thing we will do, we will you will we'll chop that knee off, right? We'll stomp it off, right? But that's why for the Yiji Kimura Ma, we're learning how to, you know, have it inward. So we we do get stomped. We need, we can able to absorb it a little bit. Right. That's Talk the that's the practical point of it. That, that makes sense. I, I never looked at it that way either, where it's just a training stance versus an application stance. See, that's good to know, too. Uh, talk about fitness. I'm a, I'm, I'm a meathead, right? I love to lift weights. I've been lifting weights forever. Um, I say if you want the easiest way to beat me in a fight is to outwin me because my cardiovascular is in the toilet. So yeah. probably after 10 seconds, anybody who could last 10 seconds with me is going to beat me. It's as simple as that in today's day and age. Uh, but where does fitness live in Wing Chun space now? Because we were, remember, we were taught for the longest time. You can't have wide shoulders. You can't uh, have, you know, a big chest. You can't have big arms. We were taught that forever. So w were they right or were they wrong? Or, you know, can people lift weights and do Wing Chun? I think it's just a misconception. Because people think that when you're lifting weight, you're going to be rigid. I mean, as long as you're able to stretch yourself or you do functional training, right? Then you're, you're you should be okay, right? I think the, I mean, when we think of martial art and how we why martial art was used back then, it's more like their warfare arts, right? You, you have to have some sort of level of fitness level, or you're not going to be like out of shape and go to the battlefield and fight, right? Even holding the bacham though or the blades, or those are weight too, no? Yeah. Right? Yep. Or the pole, the pole. And you look at the pole, I mean, what? why they're always lifting the pole like this, right? I mean, they're doing functional training, no different than people now they use battle ropes or they use like the hat to sledgehammer, right? But they're using it for fitness. That's why for me, I always tell my student is the Wing Chun is, health is the side effect of Wing Chun because you're practicing to be efficient, effective, and economical in the, in the it, but you need to require like a lot of physical fitness for that. And then of course, if you need to require generate speed, of course your health will be, will, you know, your cardiovascular improve because you need the speed, right? You need to spar, you need the endurance, right? You can't just 
say if I want to practice the internal style of Wing Chun, right? That's that's another thing that really bothers me is the the internal Wing Chun or the external Wing Chun. There's they just don't really understand about Chinese philosophy and culture. In Chinese philosophy and culture, internal and external or is balanced. It's just a an abstract term of basically saying internal is just basically we don't what we don't see. What we don't see is we don't see our heart, we don't see blood inside, we don't see how we breathe the oxygen, we don't see our ligament, right? External is really like muscle, the eyes, the hair, right? But they go hand in hand. And that's why in Chinese medicine, to see their philosophy is if you see stuff like maybe your eyes, the most ex easiest one is say that your eyes is yellow, then of course you have maybe have some liver issues, right? So it, it's just that people think it too um, superficial and too abstract that they think they're talking about like mystical stuff, like mm. chi, right? But it's really just talking about ligament, heart rate, oxygen level, right? And that's what the Chinese medicine talk about when they talk about internal stuff. They're saying, oh, how's your organ function, right? How's your heart rate? How's your able to, uh, how's your lung capacity, right? Can you, are you able to uh, move and in the, in the generate, you know, if I'm losing your breath, right? These are all part of like fitness, you know? That's, I never knew that. <laughs> That's because I always was, yeah, when every time you hear the internal, it's what mystical flow of chi are people looking for that puts them in the position where you have those fake masters up online that then are just destroyed by MMA guys. And then that goes mm -hmm. into, that goes into the, 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 Oh, well, Wing Chun needs to evolve for it to succeed. Uh, talk about that. And I don't, I don't, I don't want you to go down a rabbit hole, but you know, obviously my big bone of contention was that with Bruce Lee, and I don't ever, I, I know I've been knocking on him lately. You know, here's a, here's a, a kid who studied Wing Chun for a few years had to go to America, didn't have the completion of a training. So, so many people think that his art evolved. Removing that, we still have so many people today that says that Wing Chun needs to evolve in order to be uh, effective. Can it evolve? I mean, if we have a system that is teaching fast, economical, uh, you, you, uh, uh, first form, second form, third form, dummy, what it's teaching, is it even possible to evolve concepts and then how do you explain because i don't i don't know how we can explain it to people other well, than saying you know it's it's already it's evolving oh, all the time oh i i explained it last time uh, with someone else of another sifu uh, is simple is you just have to treat it like well like i said science right i mean with wing chun core itself is just teaching mechanics and biomechanics and physics i mean the teaching of it's like teaching someone fitness. You know, there is proper way of doing a bench press, a squat, or a lat pull down. But these are mechanics. But how you structure it and how you teach your your class can be different, right? If it all depends on the goal. I mean, the power lifter goal will be a different than the person who just wants like high intensity workout and just want to just burn calories. But the mechanics are the same, though. You no, know? like the power lifter mechanics is. It can't be no different than the person who does like just for like a hobby or a lifestyle, right? It's, it's the mechanics is the same. It's just the tactics will be different. But it doesn't mean that the the core system of Wing Chun is different. For example, a like roundhouse kick is not even a new thing. I mean, it's not an ancient thing. No one will roundhouse kick a person, right? Back in the days, right? There's no one, but like, doesn't mean that we can't adapt to the I guess the movement patterns and tactics of what people were doing, right? If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Is there anything about the history of Wing Chun that you that really um I don't know that that that, that is well I, I guess misunderstood by us? Like uh did did was it really uh created by a woman or um you know, was Wing Chun specifically used for something that we didn't see it today? Was there anything specifically about the culture and history of Wing Chun that we were not appreciating properly? Uh, I think there's, there's, yeah, I'll guess there's a lot of theories, but I'll, for me, like personally, I'll just say what's possible, right? I'll, I'll for example, like, uh, is it created by a woman? Plausible. I mean, the, there was, according to Yip Man, the, the Wing Chun was created in one in the province called Wan Nam, right? Wen Nam, right? And 
and when you actually go to one land, there is actually a woman tribe. There's actually a woman kingdom there. The men are actually useless there. If that's the case, then shouldn't shouldn't we all just be very soft and so? Why is the softness of Wing Chun right? The 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 bamboo, the the bull and the matador has always bothered me. And then over the years, probably about five ten years ago, there's Sifu Klaus Brand who's over, I believe, is in Germany. And he clearly comes from, like, the Lung Ting lineage. He teaches a very hard type of Wing Chun because he talks about it. If you've ever been in a fight, you know, you get the adrenaline dump, and you can't not tense up, and your body's going to automatically have resistance on there. Um, are we are we not doing Wing Chun unless it's purely the soft, uh, relaxed energy in a fight? Or are you going to tense up in a fight and actually react how your body's going to normally react? Uh, for me, my experiences will be the same thing as what I said about the internal and external. There's, there's no too extreme. They're, they're both about balance and, and see, Wizzle, you're a wrestler. Wrestlers are big guys, but they don't wrestle with brute force either, right? They use momentum too, but they can use brute force if they need to, mm -hmm. right? That's why in the Wing Chun Maximum, we do say with two masters are equally skilled, the person with the bigger or the stronger physique or better physique wins, right? Fitness level, right? You, 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 it's like me for going with my cycling coach. He's 6'1", 200 pounds. There's, he can mus out muscle me if he needs to, but that's in, like, while we can strive to be soft, right? But doesn't mean that physical attribute doesn't help, mm -hmm. right? Physical attribute does help. Okay, big... Unless you have unless you have an equalizer, right? That's why we ancient people when they fight with weapons, right? Then that'll be different. Yeah, a hundred percent. Uh let's talk about Chi Sao for a little bit. Has Chi Sao the focus of Chi Sao seems to be what Wing Chun is. Was there a specific time in your training where you know you you saw it as all right, we're fighting, fighting, fighting. Now it's just this has become a Chi Sao culture, and now that's how the yeah. world sees Wing Chun. Uh, I notice a lot of people just treat Chi Sao as a sparring thing, but for the Muyat system, it's actually just stage two. So with the Muyat system, there's three stages. There's like the, the single sticky hand, the double sticky hand, and then there's the sparring aspect. After like, once you get so good about uh, Chi Sao, that like, you should learn how to, how can you connect the bridge and apply what you're doing, the Chi Sao principle, when you're, when you're not connected. I mean, no one's going to fight in reality sticking onto your hand. Those are opportunities when the because Chi Sao is just talking about with the with two hand clashes, what can you do? Right? But like, okay, well, as you get better, then okay, then this see can you do it with like what will happen before you clash, right? Like there's a lot of stuff can happen before it clashes, right? Like, especially with a boxer. No boxer is not going to throw like all straight, they can throw hooks, they can throw uppercuts. I mean, they may not, you're may not able to fit in that chi sao scenario, right? And I think a lot of people just feel like chi sao is a sparring thing. And that's was never was the case in the beginning, anyways. And that's why like there's chi sao competition. Like I'm guilty of it go attending before, but like I mean it, when you look at it, that like uh, not really a competition it's more of a sensitivity drill you're just learning how to learn some techniques and how can you continue a fight when your hand are stuck on to get together pretty much that's it you're not really learning how to like fight fight because that's more like a semi-cooperative no one will stick on to you and you don't and that's another thing is that a lot of Wing Chun guys think that oh I have to stick on to the person like no I don't have to stick on to the person if I don't need to like what if I see an opening I was punch right isn't that what it's supposed to be yeah sure. uh, no I don't do you ever have anybody who's has no Wing Chun experience they see Chi Sao and they say what is that how do you how do you explain that to them without people thinking that the entirety of Wing Chun because that's what Chi Sao was just represented Wing Chun and everybody just thinks that's what it is. Oh, for me, I, for my students, I tell them that Chi Sao is just a testament of your structure. As in like, we have the Tan Long Fuk Sao. Okay, you're, you're good in the form. So in Chi Sao is like, can you maintain your structure or your integrity of your form when someone drags you, push you, right? 
punch you? Can you maintain that structure? And when you cannot maintain it, what can you do, right? That's the whole point of T-cell. T-cell is not really about fighting. It's just about learning how to, can you maintain your structure? Or what can you do when you cannot maintain it, right? Can you let go, right? Redirect the energy, right? But it's not really about fighting or slapping each other, right? I always, uh, I always like to end conversations with like uh, solutions. First, um, let's let's plug again. You're at C, you're at Derek G Chan on Instagram, uh, and yeah. then Derek G Chan on YouTube. Um, yeah. Before I ask you about the solutions, what made you start wanting to do videos? Uh, your videos are great. They're fun. You've got a light sense of humor in the videos. They're really, really good content. Um, I, I, your YouTube channel I, needs to blow up as big as your Instagram. <laughs> why? What made you start doing the videos and why? Uh, I always made videos. It's just always about promoting Wing Chun. I think uh, the funny aspect, though, is more like, I guess I want to change the perspective of most Wing Chun. I don't want to look like a very stern and very like unopened sifu, right? Like they're all like even the people that like, dress up the tang suit, and some people actually think that's a kung fu suit. I'm like, no, there's not. There's no such thing as a kung fu suit. Wasn't that's that for a, restaurant workers? Uh it's more like a formal wear or like think of like a it's like a dress shirt, right? <laughs> like like no one's going to wear a dress shirt while you're training kung fu, right? But, and that's also one of my inspiration when I was posting it because everyone's like, oh, I, you wear the tongue suit. I'm like, no, that's not even a kung fu outfit. Like, if you look at Yip Man, like, Yip Man, he, he, he was wearing an undershirt, right? A t-shirt, right? <laughs> when he's training. You don't want to wear the, a tongue suit while you're training, right? But, like, that's something that I want to, that's why I also want to do my channel. is more like um, debunking some information and having a proper information. Like, for example, too, like one of my persons thought that uh, the Tan Sao is, I mean, the beggar hand. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, it doesn't mean beggar hand. It's like, oh, yeah, someone told me it means beggar hand. I'm like, no, is Tan is easy. Tan just means you spread out. And Sao means, so you mean you spread out your hand. It's just a directional guidance. It's not really a technique, too. Okay? But, but people, it's just like a lot of misunderstandings that people would build up and then people would tell them it's more like a broken telephone effect. But, yeah. Right? Did we, did, did that happen because, you know, uh, out here, especially in, in America that we had to be, since we don't speak Cantonese, was it a, a teaching method to tell people, all right, you're clearly not understanding spreading hands. So we're going to call it a begging hand. Was that just lost in translation? I, that, and I also noticed for a lot of my uh, foreigner students, I think it's more like the it's more like a cultural thing. And though I think in North America, they're more into like the how to or technique. Everything has to be in the technique. But in the Eastern, it's more about why we do things, right? Rather than rather than how we do things. It's different. It's like uh, when you think a lot of kung fu. I'll give another example. My other my student is a mentis, and he was showing me all these mentis moves. And then he was doing this one. He's like, oh, this is a soul. I'm like, oh, okay, brush your hair. He's like, why is it get out of here? It means to, I thought it's a technique name. He's like, he's like, no, it means to brush your hair. I mean, what? I'm like, I thought it's like an apple strike, which which is, but the word that we're using it was just to tell students that, okay, just imagine you're brushing your hair for this movement. It's not really. This, this technique doesn't mean to brush your hair, right? That's one of, been one of the biggest problems, and I said this years ago, where people are like, there's no hook punches in Wing Chun. I go, why? Says who? You know, because that, that's where you get the people who are, they adhere so strictly to forms that everything, especially in Western culture, has to be techniques. So if clearly that's the case, then there, there cannot, if you throw a, a circular movement, you're not doing Wing Chun, and that's always bothered me by that. Um, talk about, you know, as you progress in your teaching uh, and people want to, what do you want to see? I hate to use the word change, but what do you want to see improve, if anything, in Wing Chun as time goes on? Uh, in, the, in the culture, in the, in, the, in the Wing Chun culture. In the Wing Chun culture. I think we're just really so divided be honest in the Wing Chun community. We are. Everyone just seeing um, like it's almost like a dad in the schoolyard, the kids in the schoolyard seeing which dad's better, right? 100 percent Are you are but you gonna be continuing that? Are you or you know I mean if you 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 are 
you're a big name in this. I mean, you know, I mean, do you do you feel that there's a responsibility for you to kind of, you know, you know, step up a little bit and start, you know, spanking uh, the rest of us out there who are not falling in line properly? <laughs> well, I for me, like, uh, I guess as a role, as a I guess a younger generation, is for me, like, my goal is just to remove this uh, myth and debunking some misconceptions, right? I think that a lot of people just think that Wing Chun is just a style, but it's more like it's just a system that teaching you how to be efficient, effective, and economical, right? Your movement, this is transferable. That's why you said it can be a hook. I mean, if you can apply it efficiently, effectively, and economically, yes, it can be, right? It can be, right? It's, but if you just strictly look at the tech as a technique, then of course you're limited with a mm -hmm. technique. A tanso can be a hook. A tanso can defend the can defend them straight. It can be like a, also a it can be an arm break. It can be, right? Or like I said about the the guaijiang and duji, well you can say is a honestly I don't think that it will work as a elbow strike. But if you can apply it, great. But like but it can also can be a throw. But it's just that you need to understand that wing chun is based on mechanics, and and a lot of people just like to argue about styles. But for me. That's why when I teach my students, I talk in science because science is not really debatable. I mean, it, it can change, right? But at least it's correct at the same, it's, at the moment it's correct, right? You can't really, I think that's the only way to, to separate yourself from always like, oh, this lineage, that lineage, this lineage, and that lineage. It's more about, you want to understand, well, okay, well, what is Wing Chun really teaching you, right? Is it, is it really just based on movement patterns? Or is it really based on mechanics? Because if you're talking about mechanics, techniques can be limitless. But if you're just talking about as a style, then you, you just limit yourself a little bit. Uh, Sifu, Derek Chan, uh, Fo, or excuse me, Ko, Ko Fung Martial Arts. Before we went live, I asked you to explain what that means. Talk about uh, Ko Fung Martial Arts, what that means. Oh, when I first started, when I started my business, I was, I was thinking of a name. So... I asked one of my Sihings to help me. He actually found like a, a, a Buddhist monk to name that actually. Because in Chinese culture, we don't prefer to have mystical animals or uh, creatures. Like you know, where you call yourself the, the dragon school or dragon Wing Chun. Or, I mean, not, no offense if you have sure. it, but in Chinese culture, we don't want to have creatures as a business name because creatures can be slayed. Right? So that's why the Buddhist monk said that, how about, Ko Feng, Ko Feng means higher potential, meaning that everyone who wants to study from you, we're trying to reach to the top together, which is more absolutely a meaningful name for me. That's absolutely love it. I, I love it. Hey, thanks for uh, taking the time out today. I appreciate that. It's uh, Sifu Derek Chan on Instagram. He's got a fantastic uh, following. Uh, YouTube, we got. We have to make your YouTube grow. We have to, we really need yeah. it. Oh, yes, if you're following I, this- Go to uh, uh, Sifu Derek Chan on uh, YouTube. Like his channel. Follow the channel. Let's get that thing to grow as well, too. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Them's Fighting Words, and we'll see you on the next one. Sifu Derek, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank that. you. Sifu Yifu.